Are you going to tell them who got arrested? No, I'm not going to tell them who got arrested. They have to watch the video to find out that. Hi, I'm Ron. And I'm Terry. And, and we're, we're the Grant Doctors. Where are we going today? Well, we're going to the Barry M. Goldwater Air Force Range. All right, so why are we going to the Barry M. Goldwater bombing range? Well, we're going to go to the southernmost border of the United States, all the way down to the border wall of Mexico. Oh, wow. And, but on the way, we're going to go to the Fortuna Gold Mine. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the video as well. So it was a great ride for us. It was the longest ride that we have ever done. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the video as we watch it today. I think you're going to enjoy it. Come join us. Well, we left our campsite at the Imperial Dam LTVA early in the morning and drove 28 miles on our, in our Polaris over to the Fortuna foothills to meet our group. And there we met our group and left to, our, to go to our first destination, which was the La Fortuna foothills mine. The Fortuna Mine is a ghost town in abandoned gold mine in the Gila Mountains near Yuma, Arizona. It was mostly successful during 1894 until 1904. At that time it had produced 120,000 ounces of gold. Yeah, I looked that up and that was in today's equivalent at $1,875 an ounce over 230 million, almost 231 million dollars in gold in 10 years. So it was a pretty successful mine. In addition to that, it produced silver and uh, many other minerals as well. We, it was a great day that day. We uh, started early and it was a long day for us. It was the longest trail we had ever ridden on. Uh, I think we did a total of round trip from our campsite uh, to the border and back of 144 miles. So quite a day for us in the Polaris Razor. But it was fun. The trail was easy. Uh, nothing difficult about it. No technical portions about it. Um, the highest hill was ascending up to the uh, swimming pool or water. Uh, yeah, cistern. Cistern, okay. So. Yeah, they, uh, you know, there was no, most of these mines, they try to, if they can find gold near a stream, that always helps because they needed water, a lot of water, to mine the gold. You can see up in the far right of the corner there, we're walking up to the, uh, we call it the swimming pool, but it's actually the, the big cistern where they stored part of the water. And they had another large one I read further away near the Gila River that held approximately a million gallons of water for this mining operation. So this was a big operation in its day. After uh, we climbed up and took a look at everything, we go back down and actually look at one of the mine shafts. Of course, you can't go down in it. They, here it is, and they have it sealed off with a fence around it. But it's pretty neat to look at. They tell me that the shaft is about 1,500 feet deep. Well, of course, we had no way of knowing that for sure or measuring that, but uh, certainly was not safe to be down in it. But we left the mine and uh, headed south uh, towards the border, which was quite a long ways. And we were on the El Camino Diablo west side of that trail. And that's a historic trail that both the Indians, the Spanish, the Mexicans, and American pioneers used for centuries. And here we are right today in 2020 with a 2021 with a Polaris Razor, whole group of them headed down on this historic trail. The foothills had a lot of uh, neat formations, which a lot of this area is made up of always has uh, something interesting. There's always something interesting around the corner. Uh, there was one portion of this trail where we stopped near a rock 
that had a somewhat of a shelter in it. You could tell that there had had been fires inside of it because it was blackened. We stopped there and had some lunch. Here it is right here. We're right coming here. right up to it and uh, you're going to see us. Uh, there's a picture of Terry and I in front of it and uh, then we're going to walk actually inside this uh, almost like cave-like uh, shelter inside this massive boulder. Pretty neat look at. The only, only problem was it had an open hole in the back so I guess when it rained uh, your campfire get flooded out. <laughs> so we're there, we were there briefly and then we took off and headed south on further down towards the border. It was a gorgeous day and uh, just a perfect, perfect day for riding and driving. We had a great time of uh, just the ride as well as the fellowship with other people who were riding with. Uh, just a word of note that the Barium Goldwater bombing range uh, does require a permit. It is free. You apply for it online and we'll put a link to that up in the video. Because um, I don't know how to do it any other way. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was neat, but it is a live bombing range. Uh, this bombing range is massive, very in Goldwater. Just the part that lies within the state of Arizona is 230 million acres. Excuse me, that's wrong. 2.3 million acres. Get it right. 2.3 million acres. Uh-oh. Looky here. Uh-oh. What's happening? What is happening? We talked about it in the rest. And there it is. We had some illegal aliens who had crossed the border fence, and they're about 15 miles inside the U.S. by the time the Border Patrol caught up with them, and we're putting them in handcuffs. And uh, we saw that, and we just decided, well, we didn't have any business there. We hightailed it out of there and <laughs> headed on south towards the border fence. Yeah. But it was kind of a... You know, I'd never seen anything like that before, so it was a pretty interesting day to see this. And here we are approaching this section of the U.S. border fence. And we have, Terry has a pretty good story about this, this section of the border fence. Oh, yeah. I posted some of this on Facebook and uh, had a gentleman respond to me that he and his squadron helped build part of this fence line, not necessarily this one here, but part of it on the Barium Goldwater Range in another section because it looked a little different than this one. Um, and he sent me a picture of their whole squadron standing in front of the fence line. It was really neat. Now this part of the fence is not a new part. This uh, part of the fence has been up for many, many years. You can tell that just by looking at the uh, But it fence. is solid. I'm tell, telling you, it is solid. Yeah, it wouldn't be something you want to really try to cross. All, however, if you go down to the mountains, you could climb up into the mountains and walk right around it. You know, you've got a little bit of a risk in climbing the, uh, the rocky... Well, they call that, that's extruded metal, so yeah. you really can't climb it. So, it's really hard. But it was kind of a neat experience, and uh, we had a lot of fun with the folks we were with. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And by all means, leave us a comment. That would help us out greatly. Uh, well, thank you guys. Until next time, God bless. And we'll see you later. Alrighty, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.